You there. There's a shield in your hand. Block with it. If this man were your enemy, you'd be dead. Lieutenant, don't hold back. The recruits must prepare for a real fight, not a practice one. Yes, Commander. We've received a number of recruits. Locals from Haven and some pilgrims. None made quite the entrance you did. <laughs> I like to stand out. It wasn't my choice. That wasn't my idea. I'd be concerned if it was. <laughs> I was recruited to the Inquisition in Kirkwall myself. I was there during the Mage Uprising. I saw firsthand the devastation it caused. So, Cassandra sought a solution. When she offered me a position, I left the Templars to join her cause. Now it seems we face something far worse. I believe the Mark will help. I don't know if I believe that everything's a mess. The Conclave destroyed a giant hole in the sky. Things aren't looking good. Which is why we're needed. The Chantry lost control of both Templars and Mages. Now they argue over a new divine while the breach remains. The Inquisition could act when the Chantry cannot. Our followers would be part of that. There's so much we can... Forgive me. I doubt you came here for a lecture. I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> I don't mind. You understand our situation. I appreciate your opinion. Look around. Our people are well organized and committed. Despite what the clerics think, we are in the best position to help. <sighs> There's still a lot of work ahead. Commander, Sir Ryden has a report on our supply lines. As I was saying. All right. Where'd you go? You're up here. I have more I want to talk about. Yes? Oh, anything I should know? Is there anything I should know? The Lord Seeker's actions are a mystery, but the Templars will aid us. They cannot sit idle while the breach remains. Why did the Templars leave? Why would Templars break away from the Chantry? The Order believes the Chantry no longer supports their efforts. Not to the extent they should. What changed? But the Templars have served the Chantry for ages. And in that time, they've come to take the Order's services for granted. Templars risk their lives against blood magic, demons, abominations, to feel as if those efforts are dismissed. I may disagree with the Order's actions, but I'm here as proof of that. But I sympathize with their frustrations. I well, might as well ask. What do you think of the people you work with? Who do you mean? Um, Josephine. What do you think of our ambassador? We have little in common. How she delights in meeting with nobles all day is beyond me. But I enjoy working with her. And Liliana? How do you like working with Liliana? The Inquisition would not exist without her. I may not always agree with her methods, but she's more passionate about our cause than anyone. Cassandra may have declared the Inquisition publicly. Liliana is just as responsible for its formation. And our soldiers. Are you satisfied with the Inquisition's forces? Our numbers are small, but they suit our needs for the time being. Some Templars have joined us instead of following the order. They've proven invaluable in training new recruits. Uh, I do have more questions. I should let you get back to work. Talk some more. Is there something you need? Yes. <laughs> um. Tell me about Templar life. I'd like to know more about the Templars. If you need insight into what the Order is doing now, I'm afraid I can't offer more than you already know. Anything else, I will answer as best I can. Um, what do Templars do? Before coming here, my Keeper suggested I avoid Templars. Do they do anything besides hunt mages? Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. And what do you think of mages? What do you think of mages? Are they all a threat? I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because of it, at times without cause. That was unworthy of me. I will try not to do so here. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. 
We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession of the beast. Why did you become a Templar? Why did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars at our local chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. I must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. The night captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. It's not very old. 13? That's still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The order sees you trained and educated first. And what about your family? And what about your family? Did you miss them? Of course, but there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. And you lived in the circle? You've lived in the circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? <laughs> typical? The last time I was in a circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence, on patrol or in the circle, ready to respond if needed. Mages pretend to ignore that presence, but they're watching you just as closely. Do you not speak to the mages? Do Templars and mages never speak to each other? Some do, but Templars are supposed to maintain a certain distance from their charges. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, you must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. How are Templars trained? What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in Thedas. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Do you enjoy it? Did you enjoy your training? learn everything. If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You were a model student. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be. I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfigurations wasn't the most exciting task. And I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. And what about your vows? Do Templars take vows? I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages. That sort of thing. There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given a filter, your first draft of Lyria and its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we have chosen. <laughs> um... Are there vows of celibacy? A life of service and sacrifice. Are Templars also expected to give up physical temptations? Physical? Why... <clears throat> why would you... That's not expected. <laughs> Templars can marry, although there are rules around it, and the Order must grant permission. Some may choose to give up more to prove their devotion, but it's not required. <laughs> Have you? Me? I, um, uh, no. I've taken no such vows. Make his breath. Can we speak of something else? Sure. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Another time, then. <laughs> yes? Um, I think we've covered... Let's see. I should get to know you better. We are working together, after all. What would you like to know? All right. Where are you from? Oh, how to act for Relden. I'd like to take full responsibility for later Machelet's odd behavior of late. You see, we recently began the study of history. I thought that it would do the young mistress some good to be exposed to all Theodosian cultures and not just Orlais. It was a foolish thought. 
Regrettably, your dear daughter has taken a particular interest in Ferelden folklore. She first developed an affinity for King Callanhad, which seems to have devolved into borderline infatuation. She stared at me eyes wide when I told how he unified the barbarians with his allegedly incomparable might and charisma. Every time I tried to move the lesson on to something more important, she insisted I tell her again about Callanhad. How the Ferelden's say his hair was twice as yellow as the sun and his chin more chiseled than the tallest peak in the Frostbacks. Twice now, I've had to tear down drawings she's tacked up in her bedroom of the man shirtless. When we moved on to the werewolves, which was even worse, as you may already know, the Ferelden's venerate the folk heroes Dane and Hafter. Dane was said to have been a werewolf and Hafter to have descended from one. No enlightened man or woman could ever view such a beast people with anything but revulsion, but you know Ferelden's and their love of wildlife. Unfortunately, these tales of the wolfmen set the little mistress's imagination afire. When she suggested to put on a play for you and her lord father, I could not say no. I'm afraid that's why Marcelle was running through the mansion, wearing wet furs and frightening the chambermaids. She was rehearsing a scene in which Hafter drives back the darkspawn. I've been informed that some priceless family heirlooms were destroyed amidst all that confusion and I cannot fully express my dismay. I understand if my abject failure as a tutor results in my immediate dismissal. A letter from Brother Bernan to his former employer. <laughs> I grew up in Ferelden near Honley. I was transferred to Kirkwall shortly after the blight. This is the first I've returned in almost ten years. Dang. Bah, uh, you were away a long time. You haven't seen Ferelden in ten years. Are you glad to be back? I was not sorry to leave at the time. I did not expect to return. Now, between the Divine's murder and the breach, I've arrived to find nothing but chaos. Varric's from Kirkwall. Varric's from Kirkwall. Did you two know each other? I knew he was friends with the champion of Kirkwall, but little else. We've spoken more since I joined the Inquisition, largely at Varric's insistence. Apparently, I spend too much time with a serious expression on my face, and it's bad for my health. <laughs> Tell me about Kirkwall. What was Kirkwall like? While I was there, Canari occupied and then attacked the city. The Viscount's murder caused political unrest. Relations between mages and Templars fell apart, an apostate blew up the Chantry, and the Knight Commander went mad. Other than that, it was fine. <laughs> Tell me about the Rebellion. What happened between Kirkwall's mages and Templars? You were at the Conclave. You must have heard people speak of it. Yes, but you were there. There was tension between mages and Templars long before I arrived. Eventually, it reached a breaking point. There was fighting in the streets. Abominations began killing both sides. It was a nightmare. How did it end? What happened then? The Templars should have restored order, but Red Lyrium had driven Knight Commander Meredith mad. She threatened to kill Kirkwall's champion, turned on her own men. I'm not sure how far she would have gone. Too far. So you opposed her? I stood with the champion against her in the end. I should have seen through Meredith sooner. Tell me about the Blight. You were in Ferelden during the Blight. Did you fight Darkspawn? No. I was stationed at Ferelden's Circle Tower. The Circle had troubles of its own. I remained there during the Blight. And what happened at the Circle? What happened at the Circle Tower? You who survived the Blight have fond memories of that time. I would prefer not to speak of it. That's, that's fair. I'll let you return to your work. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Okay. We've asked him all the questions. Um. Spoken to Varric. Tell Mother Giselle I run a business, not a charity. Okay. This is not where I want to go. We're gonna go talk to Sarah. 
And you've seen no signs of the Grey Wardens anywhere? Nope. Your son? I just don't. Grey Wardens, you said? We're not paying you to be sarcastic. Interesting. Oh, Mika, you're here. You're the Herald of Andrash today. And you were sent to shame us. The mistreat in the elves. I, I pay my elves good and proper, you should know. Friend of the age, and they've done all. And, I mean, I'm Flissa. Can I get you a drink? <laughs> I'm actually Dalish. I'm relaxed. It's all right, Flissa. I won't do anything frightening. If you wanted to close the breach, I wouldn't mind. As I said, I'm Flissa. The Inquisition soldiers needed a place to unwind, so Leliana brought me in to set up a tavern. Nothing fancy, but it's safer for the soldiers than looking for trouble in some village. Fair enough. How do you know Leliana? You said Leliana asked you to run an Inquisition tavern. How did you meet? Some luck, maybe. I managed the name back in Denerim. When I heard interesting gossip, I passed word to Liliana. Sometimes it's helpful. He asked if I wanted to own my own shipman, and I said yes. I didn't realize she meant this. Huh. I think, I can't remember. I know we talked to her before, but I can't remember if we asked her all these questions. This one, I'm, I'm sure I did. What can you tell me about this area? Adani is even the He's been making potions and tending to the wounded as best he can. Yeah. Harris is the Inquisition's Yeah, we asked her that. Whatever he okay. can make you, Thren, the Quartermaster, can probably find. Let's get out of here. Hey, Sarah. So, this is it, huh? Oh, no, it's fine, yeah? It's just, I thought it'd be bigger. <laughs> that would have been hilarious if you were a man, right? Wasted. Anyway, stopping wars should earn more sovereigns than this. Need things back to normal for coins to be flowing again. Another reason the Templars and Mages need to be sat down. Well, there's a lot more going on. It's not just a war between those two. Well, sure, the sky has a hole in it. But I can't put an arrow in that. Well, I have. Doesn't come down. That's weird. And that's the point, right? It's weird and right there. But they still want to punch each other. They're too busy to look up where the real questions are. That's what we're working on. That's why we're here. To help guide everyone back from the brink. The religious ones tell you that. That's important, right? But don't make it all about that. Seems like believing too hard is what got everyone here. And here is stupid and smells of horse. <laughs> really, what everyone needs is to get everything back to normal and proper and profitable. Sound good to you, all touched Lady Herald? <laughs> you can flirt with Sarah. Um. I mean, we're we're in here to end this. As long as the job gets done, I don't care about the rest. Fact. Spare the frills, just get it all back to normal. Best plan I've heard. Only plan I've heard, really. Everyone up their own asses. Let's get things done. Red Jenny says grab and drop. All right. Chasing the Lord Seeker, I hear. Anyone who thinks they need Lord in front of the name, that's bad. Bet he's got a portrait taller than he is. That's your first clue to a total ass. Fact. <laughs> um, thoughts on the Inquisition so far? Is the Inquisition what you thought it would be? Calling an Inquisition is a bit much, isn't it? Does this not even know what they're chasing? Fair question for me as well, I suppose. Everybody following a rumor. At least I'm used to that. Any opinions on our allies? What do you think about the people who have gathered? Which? The ones who do things or the ones who give orders? Um... Solus. What about Solus? Solus? <laughs> His head's crammed up a thousand years ago. Yeah, that's true. Cassandra? Thoughts about Cassandra? Not as buttoned up as she plays, right? Tough, though. I'd stand behind her in front of anything. I agree. Varric? Anything to say about Varric? Varric? Too clever. Always saying something, but never saying it straight. That's true. We're gonna save Vivian for later. Um, 
What do you think about our spy master, ambassador, and commander? Liliana is pretty in places. I swear I've seen her too. Or heard she used to play. But that'd be mad. Now Josephine, she's as good at humbling her kind as I am. Just with less mess. Knows her business, if you have to have it. And Cullen. I suppose if you want a jackboot, you get a big one so you can grow into it. Nice hair though. <laughs> We'll talk later. Good, right? I'll be here. I got more to task you. Chasing mages, that's a Templar's job. A big armored, pissed off helm polisher. Not too late to go find some. Or stay home. Um. Tell me about your background. Tell me about yourself. What about me? Where are you from? How about the basics? Where are you from? Ferelden. I got that from the accent. Where in Ferelden? All over? Okay, fine. Denimrim for a bit. South, north, wherever I want. No important ties worth mentioning? There are no connections you want to mention at all? Nope. It's complicated. I don't like complicated. Let's leave it at that. Maybe. Who trained you? You're skilled. Who taught you how to use a bow? No one. That seems unlikely. What? I picked it up here and there. Mostly it just makes sense. It's not like that for you. Not typically. Usually it takes considerable discipline. Hence my question. Hence? Look, I work at it. Practice a little. Not like Cullen and his pets. I mean, you miss, then you don't. Is it that hard to see when it's wrong? Well, it's not like that for other elves. I know that. <laughs> Most I know couldn't find an arrow sitting on it. Right. Maybe I just make it look easy and shite company. Fact still is, no teacher. Where would I find one in alleyways anyway? <laughs> it's nice knowing other elves. I'm just interested in talking to an elf like me. Mm, don't think so. Yep. Why not? Well, maybe you're all right. But most elves are too... elfy. Like that soulless, right? Never be as good as we were. Well, who's we? I'm just fine. No value in tradition? Actually, yeah, just throw it all away. There's nothing to learn from any of that history. Yes, don't do that. What? We lost so bad there was nothing left. You figure out what they wore on their deathbed. You wear it. Waste of time. We'll talk later. If you say so. <laughs> your wish is something, something. Sorry to be in your way. Um, tell me about your friends. You apparently have a lot of friends. Tell me about your network. It's not mine, right? I mean, it is, but it's also everyone. Everyone who wants to shove it to nobles who hide behind gold and silk. And hats, I guess. What does your group do? Are you just about pranks and revenge, or is there more to it? Well, it's a weave, right? I grease a ballroom, so a wyvern chasing git has to hunt sprained. Strangely, handmaids leave his vault open. His heirlooms pay off someone else. Maybe clean streets in Kirkwall so someone gets something else. Pish, 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 a lot of people eventually get help or a laugh. Or maybe someone dead, if they deserve it. And that's moral? So, who decides who deserves it? You. By what authority? Look, Juki cuts <laughs> the stable boy's finger off for snagging a biscuit. He's eating an arrow for tea. Deserves it. Most times, it's just fun. And embarrassed, the same as dead for some. Anyway, assassins are bard's job, innit? No fun, that lot. They might plonk a noble, right? But only to raise another. Plus, I'm shite at singing. Was there ever a red Jenny? Is Red Jenny real, or was she always just you and your friends? Don't know. Don't you care? Not if it works. I mean, Red is scary because blood. And Jenny is... Look, nobody fears the bunch of people who do random stuff. And besides, it's easy. Nobles want a bogeyman because they need to believe normal people can't get at them. Numbers, right? It don't have to be so complicated. It seems 
too casual? It seems like it should be more complicated than that. That's why you be bad at it and why I'm here. You don't want to play, don't play. That's simple too. I kind of expected, I don't know, more? Where are the people you promised? If I knew, they wouldn't be much use. That's sort of the point. Look, unless your baddies are rocks or trees, they have people they use. Cooks, squires, wipers. Yeah, I know, wipers, right? You better believe the one with wipers deserve it, right in the... Well, anyway, the little people will be there when you need them, in a million little ways. So... <laughs> These are all valid questions. How do you... I guess... How do you get anything done? This doesn't seem like it would produce much in the way of results. It's working for you. What, is every follower of yours a giant who does all things and knows your every move? Not your team of doers. I mean, the people gather it. Is that normal because it's religious? Seems like that should make it weird. Well, I guess that does make some sense. I can play along if it works for you. You have a choice. Hey, all the Inquisition. <laughs> We'll talk another time. It's all good, innit? I'm gonna let you... I'm gonna let you walk across the tavern. <laughs> Sitting and waiting. Great, yeah? Um, I need a lock picked. I was wondering if you could look at some locks for me. What, the doors under the chantry? You know about them. Places have doors. I just wasn't interested in poking through some sister's breeches. Whatever floats you. Consider them open, yeah? Opened. Hey, it's you again. It is me again. <laughs> um. All right, you've already you've answered all of these. Okay, you can ask her to leave, but I'm not going to. I'll be back if I need you. Go on. Alrighty. Let's head on in here. It's good you've returned. We heard of your encounter. You heard? My agents in a city sent word ahead, of course. It's a shame the Templars have abandoned their senses as well as the capital. Well, I mean, we had to go. We made contact. At least we know how to approach the mages and Templars now. Do we? Lord Seeker Lucius is not the man I remember. True, he has taken the orders somewhere, but to do what? My reports have been very odd. We must look into it. I'm certain not everyone in the order will support the Lord Seeker. Or the Herald could simply go to meet the mages in Redcliffe instead. You think the Mage Rebellion is more united? It could be ten times worse. Well, <sighs> uh, I don't, I don't know. Or you could stop bickering and make a decision. I agree. We shouldn't discount Redcliffe. The mages may be worth the risk. They are powerful, Ambassador, but more desperate than you realize. They're the only ones that made any kind of, like, outreach. The Templars didn't seem like they gave a crap. Um... You think it's a trap? You think the invitation could be some kind of trap? If some among the rebel mages were responsible for what happened at the Conclave, the same could be said about the Templars. True enough. Right now, I'm not certain we have enough influence to approach the Order safely. Then the Inquisition needs agents in more places. That's something you can help with. In the meantime, we should consider other options. There is one other matter. Several months ago, the Grey Wardens of Ferelden vanished. I sent word to those in Orlais, but they have also disappeared. Ordinarily, I wouldn't even consider the idea they're involved in all this, but the timing is curious. Why you... why tell me? So you're telling me this because... 
The others have disregarded my suspicion, but I cannot ignore it. Two days ago, my agents in the Hinterlands heard news of a Grey Warden by the name of Blackwall. If you have the opportunity, please seek him out. Perhaps he can put my mind at ease. And if he can't? Then there may be more going on than we thought. Hmm. Do you have anything to say? You return. Farewell. Until next time. I wonder if she'd have anything to say. Wah! Okay, that's weird. Let's go talk to Vivian. You've never been to a circle, as far as I can tell, yet you're remarkably skilled. Were you self-taught? I was trained by my keeper. Not at all. I studied magic with Keeper Deshana. I have heard about the traditions of magic among the Dalish Keepers, but it's all third-hand. In my own experience, nothing is more deadly to a young mage than a lack of knowledge. Which makes the current state of things... precarious. What do you imagine will happen if the circles are not restored? Do you foresee the Dalish taking us all under their wing? I'm... uh... Templars made their beds. Mages should be free. Justice is all that matters. Chaos harms everyone. She does approve of this option. Um, what do you imagine will happen? This doesn't necessarily answer her question, though. It feels like I'm avoiding it. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do it. Mages deserve the same freedom as anyone else. I hear that so often. It must be a great comfort to the common folk to know that their survival is trivial compared to our freedom. I'm sure that makes everything better. Justinia's death has shattered the balance of power in Thedas. If it is not restored quickly, countless lives will be lost. Mages, Templars, innocent people of all kinds now look to the Inquisition to decide their fate. I'll do what I can versus their fate is in their hands. I don't feel like I'm lording over people? I'm not deciding anything. Actions have consequences, my dear. Do not imagine that yours will go unnoticed by history. For almost a thousand years, the world believed it was in the hands of the Maker. And now many believe you are the agent of his will. Whatever the truth is, that belief gives you power. No one should have that power. Nobody should claim to know the will of the Maker. Not me, and not the Chantry. Perhaps nobody should. But if no one leads the way, many will be left behind in darkness. I've stolen enough of your time, my dear. Don't let me keep you. We are not gonna get off to a good start. Yes? Yeah, mm, let's wait. Um, tell me about the circle. I wanted to ask you about the circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? Tell me, what was circle life like? What was it like to live in a circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every circle was different. Their Templars were different, their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content. Some were cruel, some compassionate, and some indifferent. The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. Okay. What was your experience? So tell me about your personal experience with the circle. I enjoyed life in the Montsimard Circle, my dear. It was an edifice devoted to knowledge and refinement. And there is comfort to be had, you know, in the company of fellow mages. Those born without magic will never truly understand us. Was confinement hard? You must have been under constant supervision, being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I've never been forced to live anywhere. 
Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. All that was required was permission from the first enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Kirkwall was the worst, but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive. Perhaps too permissive, in retrospect. Wasn't the circle disbanded? If the circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The circle is an idea, my dear. And an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. Shouldn't you replace Fiona? If you led all the loyalists, why are you only First Enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no First Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. How did the rebellion start? How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia, again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars. Sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. You can't, you can't impose restrictions upon all mages because of what one person did. You just, I disagree with her completely. Were they justified? Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really One person. the most opportune time to break away? By all means protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. No, they didn't. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. They voted for freedom and then people just dissolved into chaos. Some of them admittedly wanted to start a war and that's why there's crazy people out in the hinterlands. I just, I disagree with Vivian so much. Um, mages are fighting mages? I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin, but Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. Except the rebels are held up in Redcliffe and not the people killing everybody? Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago to let her spend time gardening. Yes? Um, I mean, yeah. Let's go ahead and just do this. Is there anything I can do to help your efforts at restoring the Circle? After the Circles fell, their libraries were plundered by scavengers. A thousand years of recorded knowledge in the hands of bandits. 
it makes me sick to think of it. I've received news that some tomes have been located, if you are interested in writing this wrong. So I don't, I don't want to restore the circles, but reclaiming lost knowledge is always good. I'll look into it for you. If you can take care of this matter, the circle would be in your debt. Yes? I need to ask... Well, it looks like we have more about the circle. I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? Tell me about the Templars. You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the Circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarans or men. I have known some who were impossible to endure and some who were utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor, but no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royaux. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. Okay. Yes? I have more to ask you. I'd like to know more about you, Madame Vivienne. Whatever would you like to know. Where are you from? Your accent's not Orlesian. Where exactly are you from? I am from the Circle, my dear. One's country of origin rarely matters there. But if you must know, I was born in Wycombe in the Free Marches. I was sent to the Ostwick Circle, but I transferred to Montsimard while still an apprentice. How did you become a courtier? I'm curious how a Circle Mage winds up a courtier. Nobody winds up at court, my dear. It takes a great deal of effort to arrive there. I caught the eye of Duke Bastien de Ghislaine, an advantageous connection that opened many doors. When the position of Enchanter to the Imperial Court became vacant, I was able to secure it. Married a Duke? You're married to the Duke de Ghislaine? <laughs> of course not, my dear. Don't be ridiculous. Marriage is the business of alliance and inheritance. I'm Bastien's mistress. What does his wife think? And what does the Duchess de Ghislaine think of this arrangement? We got along quite well. Duchess Nicoline and I used to host musical salons together. She was a great patron of the arts. She passed away from a fever a few years ago, the poor dear. And what is a court enchanter? What duties does a court enchanter have? I am tasked with providing assistance to the Empress on arcane matters. Most of my predecessors restricted this to lighting lamps and doing parlor tricks. In such troubled times as these, however, I provide political advice to Her Majesty on the subject of the Mage Rebellion. Okay, that looks like everything we can ask her about. Let's go grab this. Hello? Excuse me. I've got a message for the Inquisition, but I'm having a hard time getting anyone to talk to me. Um... Who are you? Who are you, soldier? Comissius Aklasi with the Bulls Chargers Mercenary Company. We mostly work out of Ole and Navarra. We've got word of some Tevinter mercenaries gathering out on the Storm Coast. My company commander, Iron Bull, offers the information free of charge. If you'd like to see what the Bulls Chargers can do for the Inquisition, meet us there and watch us work. Okay. Um, can you... Tell me a little more about your company. What can your bull's charges offer the Inquisition? We're loyal, we're tough, and we don't break contracts. Ask around Val Royo. We've got references. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about your leader. What should I know about your commander? Ein Bull. He's one of those Canari, the big guys with the horns. He leads from the front. He pays well, and he's a lot smarter than the last bastard I worked for. Best of all, he's professional. We accept contracts with whoever makes the first real offer. You're the first time he's gone out of his way to pick a side. Interesting. Why give us the message? Why did your commander send us this information? Iron Bull wants to work for the Inquisition. He thinks you're doing good work. Okay. Well, I'll think about it. We'll consider your offer. I appreciate it. We're the best you'll find. Come to the Storm Coast and you can see us in action. Okay. I got a Canary Codex. There was one more thing I needed to do. Right, 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 right. Let's go to the war table. 